five, four, three. Thank you, Daniela. This time for the headliner presented by Miller Lite. Our guest is Tiger infielder, third baseman, and shortstop Willie Castro. Willie, thanks for joining us today. Really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, you you're having a, a a great season right now. You're hitting over 300. Uh, you're batting 349. A couple of three home runs, 12 runs batted in. You're on base percentage 364, 556. Did you think that it was going to be this easy for you this season? Well, you know, I had a little bit of experience last year when I got called up. And, you know, it, it didn't went so well. I, it, it went okay, but I know I, I should, like, do better. And I think that helped me last year to come this year even stronger. And and I feel, I feel, so, I feel so good right now that I just got to keep up with the stuff that I'm doing, you know, not changing – not change every, anything that I'm doing right now, like my routine. I feel great doing it. It's just something that's keeping me going every day. Well, you know, you know, it's interesting you would say that. I mean, last year, uh, uh, you, you, it wasn't quite as good as this year. I mean, you know, you're called up. I don't know if you played 30 some odd games or whatever it was. Uh, but that experience, you re what did you learn from that experience? Because as you said, you have a lot more confidence this time around was there something that really stuck out from last year that you were able to work on i guess during the off season to make sure it didn't happen again yeah you know i work a little bit more on my um you know like on my approach hitting um i think like swinging swinging a lot uh a lot of bad pitches last year that was i was struggling i was struggling a little bit and uh this year i came with my mentality to to hit um, the 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 ball that I want to hit, I want to drive to the gap, and that that's what I was really focusing on this um this off season, and and this is something that I, I always keep in mind every time I go out to the field and play, and you know I'm there to to make the team win. When you look at uh, you're a switch hitter now, I I know you were born in Puerto Rico and grew up in the Dominican Republic. Was that, have you been a switch hitter your whole life or was that something as you progressed, you knew that maybe becoming a switch hitter would even make you that more valuable as a player? Yeah, you know, um, I wasn't a switch hitter my whole life. I, I started switching, switch hit when I was 14, when I was back in Dominican. Um, my dad was the one that told me I, switch, uh, I should switch hit. And I, I, I didn't really want it to, you know, and there was one day that I that he told me, hey, try try uh, left-handed, and I had a line drive to the middle, and I and I feel good. And after that, I just started liking the the lefty side. Well, now I'm left-handed, dominant left-handed, throw and bad. I couldn't do anything with my right hand if I tried. How difficult was it for you to to switch? You know, to switch it to learn how to hit left-handed or was it not a very you know difficult transition for you uh, to be to be honest it, it wasn't difficult it wasn't difficult because i told you um when i hit that that line drive to the middle i feel i i, I feel natural you know after that i had the love and the switch hit and you know i just kept working kept working every day and i, I just came i think a better hitter left side when you when you're in batting practice, do you do you hit like 50 swings left-handed, 50 swings right-handed, or do you work on one? Uh, do you work on right-handed hitting more than you do left-handed hitting? Well, I do the same, the same work, uh, the same uh, the same front toss uh, on both sides. You know, same same amount of, of balls. You know, um, this when that's a right-handed pitcher. Uh, when we're resting a right-handed pitcher, I try to take more more swings on uh, the left-handed, so you you know, I could get uh, so I could see the ball better and and yeah, I get about the the, the same amount on both sides. Um, when you started to switch hit, and you know, and, uh, and I'm sorry, I, I I don't know why I'm obsessed with switch hitting today, but when you're <laughs> when you're when you're hitting left-handed, do you find yourself almost becoming ambidextrous, meaning you do you do things now with your left hand that you didn't do until you started hitting left-handed? 
Yeah, you know, I think I become a, like I was saying, I think I become a better hitter left-handed, you know, because it's more, it's more right-handed than, than left-handed. So I just try to, you know, to try to take the same amount of pitches on both sides when I'm hitting batting practice or doing my routine in the cage. And and yeah, you know, I feel 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 good both sides of right now. Been hitting really good. Well, uh, okay, I'll move off switch hitting. Although I, you know, I could actually talk to you the whole interview about it. I I don't know why. I just find it, you know, I, I guess someone who's dominantly left-handed seeing someone who can actually do things with both hands is pretty amazing to me. But uh, let's move on. You're you're originally uh, Cleveland. You get traded to the Tigers. I know that the organization was really, really happy to acquire you. Uh, what was it like to go from your original organization in Cleveland to Detroit? Were you looking for the opportunity? Were you happy to be a Tiger and nothing against the Indians? Oh, you know, was, you know, I was a little, I was a little shocked when they told me I got traded to the Tigers, but. You know, I think it was a better opportunity for me to be uh, in the Tigers organization because, you know, um, Lindor, um, uh, Ramirez, Kipnis was there when that. And I think I, was gonna, I wasn't I was going to have the opportunity that I have here. So I feel really good. At the end of the day, I feel really good. I think that was a better um, chance for me to be a big leader. You know, you're, you know, you're only 23 years old. Uh, how does it feel that you are part of this core group of young Tigers? Obviously, the fan base is very excited to see the next generation of Tiger, and, and you're part of that. How has that been for you? Uh, have you been able to bond with uh, with all these young guys? Because there's certainly a lot of you. Yeah, it's, it's a really good team. It's a really young team, too. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to take advantage of the, the older guys like Miggy, uh, Miguel Cabrera, um, Jonathan Scoop, um, I, they've been teaching me a lot of good stuff that have been helping me like every time I go to the field. Uh, it's something I always keep in mind that, you know, we are here to make the team win and it's something great, you know, and the young guys, they, they, they're really, a lot, a lot of them, they play uh, in, uh, in the minor leagues. Uh, I see them, we were growing up each other there and it's just great to see them here and, you know, just playing ball. Yeah, uh, what is it like to have a Miguel Cabrera, what best hitter of his generation? You know he's going into the Hall of Fame, but he just seems like a big kid out there. Is does he just put you at ease? I mean, is it just a lot of fun to be around him? And you know, he's sort of you know, for lack of a better term, you probably never heard. He, you know, he seems he's a little bit of a screwball at times. You know, just uh, you know, just loving life and playing baseball. Yeah, it's just great. It's just great to have him in the. And the team, um, you know, I always see him when I, when I was little. I always see him uh, playing. His approach hitting to Oppo is it is amazing. You know, every time I see him in the and and um and BP, I always see him with his approach like he does in the game. It is something that that I see that I got to do too, so I could become a better hitter like I'm doing this year. And it's it just great, you know. We we all like brothers, and they, um, it's just great to have them there, and all of the guys. When you look at it, I, I yeah, I, I would assume you're playing third and you're playing short, mostly short. Uh, do you prefer a position? Would you like to be uh, obviously the Tigers starting shortstop someday? Is that the position you see yourself in? Yeah, that's a position I see myself. You know, I'm working for that. Uh, you know, focusing on those uh, routine plays that that's what's gonna keep me going. You know, every time I I be there playing that position, you know, there's a lot to do there. You have to do a lot of stuff. You like you like the um the boss, like they say, the boss in the in the, in the infield. And I just think making the routine plays, I, I will be there every time. How difficult is it for you? Or you're young enough. Maybe have you been playing the shift your whole time, or or do you do you like the shift? Do you do you see why? Usually you're still still on your side of second base, but uh, you know the third baseman moves over, and you know you're kind of out there by yourself on that side of the uh, on the uh, on the infield for most shifts. How has that adjustment been for you? It's been good, you know. Um, I wasn't doing that. Uh, when I first got signed, I, I didn't see the shift too much. You know, when I played double A, 
when I played double A and triple A, that that's when I when I was um trying to we were doing more shift, you know. Uh, I wasn't really feeling comfortable, you know, with all the movement. But then when I when I got to double A and triple A, that's uh, I was still I was starting to get like better, uh, more comfortable, and, and knowing where uh, you know, like the positioning uh, on the car that we have, and you know, I was really doing good. And and here in the big leagues, I'm doing really good on that too. All right, you know. Um... I know that you were originally down in the alternative training site in Toledo. You got called up on August 11th. What was that experience down in Toledo? Was that a good experience for you? Were you able to work on your game? I know you want to be in the major leagues. Don't get me wrong. I understand that. But, I mean, was that good to be down there with some of your young Tiger brothers and, you know, kind of just working on stuff? Yeah, it was. It was I really liked it down there, you know. Obviously, it's not the same, you know, uh, down there and, and up in the in the big leagues. But, you know, I went down there to, you know, to get caught up quick. Uh, you know, I was just uh, practicing on the stuff on my routine plays. Um, I was doing my routine every day. That was that's what gave me getting me successful this year. Um, uh, not missing the balls that I want to hit. And um, yeah, you know, I was just focusing on try to get one percent better every day and it's great you know when i got caught up i said I, i'm not going back there i'm gonna try to do my best to make the team win and stay here uh, i i know you're leading the team in hitting uh and, and i'm kind of curious a rough a rough go in minnesota virtually every game was competitive you lost a couple in the ninth you know walk off and all that how do you feel about this team you're still in a in the wild card race uh, you know, Milwaukee coming up tonight, a couple of games, then maybe you play St. Louis, maybe you don't uh, on Thursday, uh, and then it's the White Sox again. I mean, the schedule's difficult, but how do you feel about the team's chances this year? Hey, we have we have a really good team. Uh, you know, we it's okay. We, we're going to have some up and downs, but, you know, the, the team is still, they're still hyped up. Um, we are here to play. You never know what's going to happen every game, you know. Um, we are here to play hard. I think we've been playing hard, and it's something you know. It's okay about the the stuff that happens in the game, but we are a pretty good team, and we know we're gonna do well. Yeah, well, you know, I've heard if I've heard it once, I've heard it a million times, Willie. That's just baseball, you know. Uh, I want to get into it. I know that I know you were born in Puerto Rico, but you grew up in the Dominican Republic. Uh, Wednesday is Roberto Clemente Day. Great Puerto Rican ball player, just great ball player. Um, do you have inspir do you draw infra inspiration from his life obviously the way it tragically ended uh, on, on an airplane crash flying supplies to uh, earthquake victims in Nicaragua I remember like or yesterday I remember him as a player can you just expound maybe a little bit on you know born in Puerto Rico and having such a great role model as a Roberto Clemente yeah you know he raised his life you know just trying to get Awesome food for the guys, um, for all the people that went through that. It, it, that's great. Um, I heard about the the jersey that we're gonna wear. You know, it's uh he's a role model. He, he was one of the best players in the game. You know, and then uh, you know, just great about hearing that jersey that we're gonna wear. You know, I, and I don't mean to interrupt you. I mean, I, I would imagine that it's got to be a great feeling for you to have such an influx of uh, of of Latin talent and in the major leagues. I mean, you know, uh, you're not alone. I mean, you have a lot of role models, regardless if they're Latin or not. But I mean, to have, you know, some of your fellow uh, uh, countrymen or whatnot playing with you has to be a pretty good feeling for you. Yeah, it is. You know, like I was saying, uh, it's a role model to everybody, to every uh, Puerto Rican, not only the Puerto Ricans, everybody, because he was one of the greatest players. And and it's so sad how he lost his life, you know, trying to uh, feed the the people that went through that, and you know, just bad. But yeah. Uh, you know, uh, Willie. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Uh, good luck tonight against the Brewers. You're having a great season. It's a lot of fun watching you play. And uh, you know, I know you're going to be in the old English D and uh, patrolling that shortstop position for many, many years to come here in Detroit. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for having me.
Really appreciate it. All right, that'll do it. That is the headliner presented by Miller Lite. It is the original light beer. It's only 96 calories. It tastes delicious. And remember, it's for delivery. Willie Castro, what a great player. I think we've got a good one there, Daniela.